On a dark night, an alliance of Irish and Scots are crossing the Irish Sea. They are headed towards the English King Athelstan and his forces in northern England. Their aim is to crush the English king, and they know they outnumber the English forces. But the English king has Viking mercenaries in his army, which the alliance of Scots and Irish knows are great warriors. Readying themselves for the battle, Olaf Guthfredson, king of Dublin, and Constantine II, king of Scotland, see a Viking warrior in front of the line. In sheer contempt of death, he wears no chain mail whatsoever. He is biting his shield, yelling and beating his bare chest. This is Tarolf, a fierce Viking berserker. The two forces clash together in a brutal battle that waves back and forth. Before the Scots-Irish alliance starts to get the upper hand, forcing the English back. But then the invaders hear a mighty roar that sends shivers down their spine. <laughs> Tarolf is seized by a wild rage. The berserker roared, the battle was on, and the wolf pagans howled and shipped their spears. Tarolf goes berserk, whereupon he used his heavy sword to mow down Scots and Irishmen to all sides. Finally, the berserker faced one of the enemy's leaders, a powerful earl. Tarolf drove the spear into the breastplate of the earl, so that it stuck out between the ribs. Then Tarolf drew his sword and cut on both sides, and his fellows went hard on those with them, and Britons and Scots then plunged in droves. Up on seeing the berserker cutting down the earl, the alliance panicked and broke their ranks. A desperate panic started, men frantically trying to save their lives by fleeing. But most of them were struck down, long before they could reach their ships. Thanks to the berserker Tarolf, the English King Athelstan had won the battle in a great victory. <laughs> The berserkers were the greatest Viking warriors and practiced secret shamanic rituals. These men were said to get their great strength and power through shamanic practices that led them to live extreme lifestyles. The earliest surviving reference to the term berserker in the Viking world is in Harold's Kvad, a skaldic poem composed by Thorbjorn Hornklofi in the late 9th century in honor of King Harold Fairhair, as Ulfadnar meaning men clad in wolf skins. There are also references to berserkers among Roman scholars, describing Germanic tribes long before the Viking Age, and describe them as half-naked and fearless warriors. According to historian Michael Spidel, the first reference to berserkers was found in Ukraine, dated as early as 300 BC. A stone figure from Kurnasovka depicts a naked warrior with a belt, long hair, three axes, a club and a spear. He also says that berserkers were present as mercenaries in Assyria's army when the country's king, Tukulti Ninurta, crushed the Babylonians in 1228 BC. After this great victory, the king hired a poet to write a victory verse. Enraged, they ran to the front without armor. They have removed their breastplate, thrown away their clothes, tied up their hair and polished their weapons. The Viking berserkers usually lived in the forest under extreme conditions in order to harness the power of their spirit animal, the bear, the wolf, or the wild hog. Though each of these cults has their own names, they are all accepted in today as berserkers, more on the different cults later in this presentation. Berserkers had only what they needed to survive in nature, nothing luxurious and lived a very primary life. They gnawed at the edges of their shields and sometimes threw their swords and shields aside before battle. When the Norse boys reached manhood at the age of 12, they were given a sword and shield by their father. This was considered to be among their most precious possessions and they looked after these things very carefully. So for the berserkers to throw his sword and shield aside with such nonchalance shows that they didn't fear death. Because the Vikings believed that their lives had already been determined by the Norse gods, they feared nothing, but welcomed death. The berserkers were so dedicated to their craft that they were often recorded in historical texts as being animals instead of humans. 
This was considered to be a great achievement as the berserkers' main goal was to transform into their cult animal. There are some accounts in history that claim a few berserkers were successful with this and were actually shapeshifters. However, I'm not Alex Jones or David Icke, so I'm gonna take that part with a grain of salt. The berserker state has been described as follows. This state caused warriors to go into a state of hysteria and frenzy, so extreme that they couldn't differentiate friend from foe. They would cut down any living thing in their path without remorse. Many accounts of berserkers talk of their tendencies to bite at, and even eat, the metal at the edges of their shields, and one account even mentions a berserker who swallowed a fire ember. King Harold Fairhair used berserkers very effectively as shock troops, and won many of his battles in this way, crushing the opposition before they could muster an effective defense. Other kings and jarls used berserkers as part of their army of herdmen, and they were sometimes ranked the same as the royal bodyguards. The Icelandic historian Snorri Sturluson wrote the following description of berserkers in his Inglinga saga. Odin's men rushed forwards without armor, were as mad as dogs or wolves, bit their shields, and were strong as bears or wild oxen, and killed people at a blow, but neither fire nor iron told upon them. The rage the berserker experienced was referred to as berserker gang, meaning, fit or frenzy, or the berserk movement. This state of fury could also happen during laborious work and perform tasks which otherwise seemed impossible for normal human beings. This state started with shivering, chattering of the teeth, and chills in the body, and then the face would swell up and change its color. He would then fall into a great rage, howling like a wild animal, biting the edge of their shields, and cut down everything they met, without discriminating between friend or foe. Because of this, the berserkers would wear things, for instance furs of a wolf or bear, to let everybody know that this person was a berserker. In this way, other allies would know to keep their distance, so they wouldn't be cut down by the raging berserker. When the rage condition ceased, a great dulling of the mind and feebleness followed, and the berserker would retreat to the woods and stay alone while this condition lasted, a state that could last for many days. Reaching the berserker gang state was considered a rite of passage into their occult world. Men would train in the woods for years to become worthy enough to join the ranks of the elite. They braved the code, adopted the habits of their patron animal, and drank the blood of wolves, hogs and bears. However, this image of the berserker would change as time passed, and the sagas would later describe the berserkers as, boasters and bullies who loot, plunder, and kill indiscriminately, rather than heroes, more on that later. There are several theories as to where the name Berserker originates from. One claims that the three first letters, B, E, R, is meant as a bear, while Tserker is translated to shirt. The combined phrase thus meant a bear of shirt, which supposedly described the near-nude state the Berserkers entered into battle. Another theory argues that B, E, R means bur, an Old Norse word for bear. This was thought to describe the bear cult of these warriors, and this theory has caused many historians to abandon the bear shirt theory. Wolf warriors were revered among the berserkers, and this particular cult was well known in Norse culture, but also survives through Roman culture, showing painted Roman shields with a wolf on it. These shields were put on display in the Armolustrium, a festival in honor of the Roman war god Mars. Wolf warriors are also found throughout other ancient cultures, most notably the Mongols and Native Americans. This particular cult was thought to be one of the most powerful, since these berserkers were often referred to as Odin's men. Those berserkers who were devoted to the bear cult, drew their power from the bear, the biggest animal predator in Scandinavia, and was once widespread across the northern hemisphere. In Egil's saga, the bear cult is described as They were built and shaped more like trolls than human beings. Another example comes from the saga of Rolf Kraki, where Bodrub Jarki is able to shape shift into a bear and uses this ability to fight for King Rolf Kraki. Men saw that a great bear went before King Rolf's men, keeping always near the king. 
he slew more men with his four paws than any five of the king's champions. The berserkers were like other Vikings, very religious and in one instance, as the Svarfdala saga tells us, a berserker postponed a home gang challenge, until three days after Yule, the Viking version of Christmas. Last, but not least, the Svinfalking, the boar warriors, meaning swine array, or boar snout. Boars played a central role in Germanic paganism, and in Viking culture the wild boar was beloved by the god Freyr and the goddess Freya. Warriors could ritually transform into boars so as to gain strength, bravery, and protection in battle. These warriors were well known in the Norse culture, though in addition to their ruthlessness, they were recognized as being masters of both disguise and escape, something they used to give themselves an advantage on the battlefield. There are several theories as to how the berserkers were able to gain so much strength and power. One of the most popular is that the berserkers used psychedelic mushroom, or massive amounts of alcohol to enter their intense and frenzied trances. Both of these things are thought to fit the specifications for substances that could have been used in Viking rituals, and would go a long way in explaining the bizarre behavior of the berserkers. This is much debated though, but the theory is further supported by the discovery of seeds belonging to the plant, Henbane Hyaciamus niger, in a Viking grave that was unearthed in Denmark in 1977. An analysis of the symptoms caused by Hyaciamus niger, are also similar to the symptoms ascribed to the berserker state, which suggest it may have been used to generate their warlike mood. Another theory is that the Vikings would eat magic mushrooms, called Liberty Cap, making them able to enter the state of the berserker. It has been hypothesized that Ammonita muscaria, a poisonous mushroom, could have been used by the berserkers, but very few historians believe this to be true now. There could also be psychological reasons that the berserkers were able to access a state of frenzy so easily. Some hypothesize that berserkers were genetically predisposed to severe mental illness. Others have suggested that their rage and transformation was a form of self-induced hysteria, initiated before battle through a ritualistic process, also known as effect number. Jonathan Shea makes a connection between the berserker rage of Vikings and post-traumatic stress disorder. In his book, Achilles in Vietnam, he writes, If a soldier survives the berserk state, it imparts emotional deadness and vulnerability to explosive rage and permanent hyperarousal, which is a pervasive mood and life-altering symptom in which you are consistently irritable, angry, and paranoid. No matter what the cause was for their fury, the berserkers were able to access a part of themselves that not many others have done after them. We see some of the same behavior in extreme sport athletes, like free solo climbers, where the climbers climb alone, without ropes, harnesses or other protective equipment, forcing them to rely entirely on their own individual preparation, strength, and skill. The most famous is of course the berserker at the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066, who blocked the bridge over the river, and cut down 40 enemy soldiers. The English sent wave upon wave against him, but his long battle axe killed anyone who came too close. It was not until the English sent a soldier in a barrel down the river, and pushed his spear up between the planks from under him, that they were able to kill the berserker. The Norwegian king, Harald Hardrati was killed during this battle, a battle that is also considered to be the last of the Viking Age. When we think of the Vikings we often think of large brutes who pillaged villages, stole, and spilled blood wherever they went. However, the Norse themselves was actually quite peaceful people and even had very high standards for gender equality in their day. The berserkers however, were a different story. Some of the harshest critiques of the berserkers came from their own people, because of their brutality and behavior. We also have stories about berserkers who used their fighting skills to basically rob people by challenging a lesser fighter to home gang. In Norway and Iceland, you could challenge someone to home gang for no good reason whatsoever. If you won, you could now claim the loser's farm, valuables, and even his wife. So, in any case, I think that I would like to challenge you to a home gang. 
Så kan vinneren ta over eiendommen og kona og alt mulig til taperen. For det er sånn reglene er, ikke sant, Olav? Hører du på Olav at reglene er der som de er? Stemmer det du sier der, Arvid? Gjør det. Ja, men Arvid, du er jo ingenting. Nei, men det er i hvert fall sånn reglene er. Og da blir det jo for dumt om det ikke benyttes av lovverk eller regelverk, sånn som det foreligger. Jeg har bygget opp hele denne gården med mine egne hender, fra ingenting. Det respekterer jeg deg skikkelig for. Så jeg, Arvid, utfordrer herved Olvar til Holmgang. This is likely an important part of the reason berserkers was later outlawed, along with their habits of pillaging, burn down villages, kill livestock, kill men and women indiscriminately, and raped both married women and young women. They were feared by all when they went into their state of frenzy. Fearless berserkers like Tarolf were like a superweapon in the Viking Age, almost like having a dragon in Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon, and often played a decisive role on the battlefield. In 1015, Jarl Eirik Hakanarsen of Norway outlawed berserkers, and in Gragas, the medieval Icelandic law code, berserkers were outlawed around the same time. By the 12th century, all berserkers and their cults had disappeared. I hope you found this presentation interesting. That was great. And if you did, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as if you were a Viking berserker. I cover a lot of historical topics here on my channel. So check out my other videos to see if there are others you find interesting. And I hope to see you in the next one.